Disclaimer. The information provided in this video is for general information and educational purposes only. Students should test cybersecurity techniques in the secured lab setup. I do not take any responsibility, and I am not liable for any damage or problem caused while implementing the tools and technique. Discovering SQL Injections in Post Now to try and discover SQL injections, you need to browse through your target and try to break each page. So whenever you see a text box or a parameter on the form, for example, page.php, then something equal to something, try to inject stuff there. So try to use a single quote, try to use an and or the order by a statement to break the page and make it look different. So, I'm gonna show you here an example. And I'm gonna go into the login page first, right here. And it is asking me to log in now, but I actually registered with my own name. So you can just go in here and register. I have a username called bloody and a password with 12345678. So first, I'm gonna log in just to show you. My username is bloody, and my password is 12345678. And now I'm logged in as bloody, and my signature was BC. It's just nothing really, just like a test. So I'm gonna log out, and we're back at the login page. Right here, we have the page, so you can try to inject it into that. But we will get into that later. For now, we're having an example of injecting text boxes. You can try to inject it into the name and into the password. I'm gonna put my name as bloody and I'm gonna put a single quote. I'm putting this sign into my password. Let's see if we can break it. And as you can see now, there's an error being displayed to us. And it doesn't look like a normal error, it looks like it's a database error. And usually, you will be very lucky if you get an error like this. Now, usually, the error won't be as informative as this. Sometimes you'll just see that the page is not acting as you expected. Sometimes it'll just be a page that does not look as it should. For example, if it's a news page, maybe it'll have the article missing. Or if it's a blog, it'll have one of the posts missing or different kinds of posts. So you need to keep an eye on what's changing. In this example, we're actually getting a really nice error. It's telling us which file it has, and it's telling us that there's an error in the statement. And the error here the quotation mark that we added. And it also tells us the statement that's being executed. This is really good for learning. Because now we can see what's the statement, that the system is trying to run. And the system is trying to do a select asterisk, so it's trying to select everything from accounts, where the username is equal to bloody, and the password is equal to a single quote. And note that the web application is already adding quotes around the name. So when I said bloody, it added bloody between the two quotes. And it added the single quote that I added between another two quotes. So that's why we have three quotes right here. So from this, it's like 70% of the target website has an SQL injection. We're still not sure if it can execute what we want it to do. So can I actually inject code and get it to be executed? Let's see if we can do that. So the username is gonna be bloody again. And what I'm gonna do with the password, I'm going to put my password. So I'm gonna put 12345678, and then I'm closing it. So I'll tell you why I'm closing it because the current statement through the system is select asterisk from to bloody and is equal to. And it's gonna open a single quote by itself. So let's call this s password. So we're treating this as a variable. And it takes in whatever I put on here, whatever I'm gonna put in this box. And it's gonna insert it instead of the s password, which is a variable. So I'm just giving you an idea, so you need to be able to imagine this happening. So it's taking whatever I put in there, and it's gonna put it between two single quotes. And it's gonna be inserted in there, and executed on the system. So, what I'm doing is I'm gonna put 12345678, and I'm gonna add the quote myself. 
So what I'm gonna do right now, the code is gonna be like this. So it's gonna select this, and the password is equal to that. And I have two quotes right now. And then what I'm going to do is, I'm gonna say, and, one is equal to one. So one is equal to one. And I'm just trying to see if it's going to execute what I want it to do. So my statement right now is, that it's gonna be select asterisk from accounts, where username is equal to bloody and password is equal to 12345678. And note, I'm gonna be inserting this myself, and 1 is equal to 1. One problem that the system is gonna complain about is that we have an extra quote here because I'm gonna be inserting this myself in the text box. So it's gonna be complaining about this, it's gonna say this is an open code and has never been closed. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add the comment. And when you add a comment, basically everything that comes in after the comment will not be executed. I'm gonna use the hash as the comment. So anything that comes in after the hash, the system is gonna ignore. So I'm gonna inject now is gonna be this, and one's equal to one in this, so as I said, usually what you have here, you have slashed your password or depending on what the program is called it, for just imagining this. And I'm gonna be inserting this inside. So when you do that, and you insert it inside, this is what the code is gonna look like. So it's gonna look like the correct username, the right password, and 1 is equal to 1, which is true. And then it's gonna ignore this quote right here. So if we paste this, we should be able to log in. It should allow me to log in. And perfect, we were able to log in and the username is bloody. So far, we haven't done anything. But this kind of shows us that is it running our code. Let's try a different thing. Now, let's try to add a false statement. So we did one equal one that was correct. It executed what we wanted. Let's try one equals two, and this is false. So I have the correct password, and I have the correct username, and one is equal to two. And this should be wrong because it's false one is not equal to two, and I'm using an and so everything has to be true. So it should give me an error even though I'm gonna put the correct username and the right password. So I'm putting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight and one's equal to two. So it's gonna be like, oh, this is wrong. And as you can see, it's given me an authentication error, a bad username or password, even though I'm given the correct password and the right username. So this confirms that this website is actually injecting anything we want in the password. So we can use the password field to inject SQL code. And it's always gonna be on this form. Because we're gonna put a password, close the quote, and then put the code that we want to execute on the system right here, and it's going to be executed on the target system. I hope you learned something once again in today's tutorial. Don't forget to subscribe, share, like, and enable notifications to keep you updated on the latest ethical hacking topics. Thanks again for watching. Let us move on to the next episode of the SQL Injection Documentary. Peace.